Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Team Lux Platinum Training. My name is Tanisha Burke. I am a two-star director, and this training takes place each and every Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the topics, they vary. Sometimes it's a topic that I pick. Um, if I've learned something new and I want to share it with the team, that'll be the training topic. Sometimes it's topics that you all, the business partners, will present and say, hey, we need training on this. Can you um, do a training on this particular topic? And sometimes we just have a Q&A, you know, where people just come on and they share what challenges they're having and we just you know, chop it up and uh, come up with a solution to the obstacle. So tonight, I'm so excited, tonight's training is going to be on the four elements of edification. Now, one of the things that I love to do when we do this training is I want you guys to use the chat feature because I want it to be interactive. I don't want it to be just me talking to you. Um, I want to get your feedback because then that helps me with future trainings. It also helps other business partners. Some things that you may, um, questions you may have, there's a good chance someone else on a team has that same question. So we're gonna go over the four elements of the edification. Now, I gave a homework assignment for all of you that if you had not watched JP Watkins Colors Training, to watch that prior to tonight's training. So I wanna know, post in the chat, how many of you have watched JP Watkins Colors Training? Maria said me, thank you, Maria. How many of you did the homework assignment? Ashanta said me, Louise said me, Lisa said yes, I did, Debbie said me, Kayla said me, Tyra said me, awesome. Angel said me, Gina said me, Natalie, yes. Tamikia said me. <laughs> great job, great job. Awesome, Joy says she watched it twice. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so let's dive into it. Let's first talk about what is edification. Can I be honest with you guys? I had no idea what edification was until I joined this business. I just didn't, it wasn't part of my vocabulary. But in network marketing, edification is used to provide credibility for a person, event, or company. In network marketing, it is vital that you edify your upline leaders in order to give them credibility and position them as experts. All right, very, very important to know what is an edification. So basically when you're doing a three-way call, you want to let your prospect know that the person you're about to put them on the phone with is qualified to talk to them about this opportunity. You don't just wanna throw them on a the phone and say, uh, you know, John, this is my senior business partner, Tamikia Smith. Tamikia, this is John. John's like, who the heck is Tamikia Smith? And why did you put me on the phone with her? So you want to edify Tamikia before you get John on the phone so that he's excited to talk about, talk to her, and you know, he knows that she can answer his questions. Does that make sense? All right. Let's talk about the reds. What is a red? So 15% of the population are red. Reds are money made, money motivated, and money focused. They are goal oriented and driven. They are well connected and work well with a staircase organization level, meaning different levels going up. You know, you got the CEO, the president, the vice president, right? So they work well when there's leadership that goes up, 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 up. All Reds care about is money, 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 and more money, and how fast they can get it. They are not warm and fuzzy with other people. Reds don't teach people how to succeed. They have about a 5% retention rate in their organization. Reds know it all and are not coachable. It's their way or the highway. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. You know what they say, you either say ouch or amen. <laughs> How many of you, and, and this is not to say that you're 100% red, but 
How many of you can identify and say, yes, I'm red? Because I can tell you, Tanisha is 100% red. Um, but I've learned how to pull out my yellow side, my green side, and my blue side when needed. But when I first got in this business, I was very much a red. Uh, and you know how JP Watkins talks about the AK-47, right? I was that person. I ain't care about your feelings. Don't be crying. I don't want to hear about your sob story. It's like, let's go get this money, right? You can cry later, <laughs> right? That was me. How many of you can identify and say that you are a red? So let's see. <laughs> Tamika says she's burgundy. Tamika, Tamika, you are very much a red. When you may have morphed, but when you joined the business, you were very much a red. <laughs> Tanya says, I'm red. Jerry Long is laughing. Thelma says she's red with a touch of yellow. Jody said she's red. Jerry, okay, some red. Joy said some red. Debbie said, I'm a rainbow. All right, so that is your red. Again, it's very important that you understand a red when they're presented to you. You want to know what color your prospect is. All right, let's go to the next one. Yellows. 35% of the population are yellow. Yellows are successful in building large organizations. They like to build deep, meaning put people under them. So your yellows, they're not going to go 20 wide. They're not going to, chances of them going 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, 40, that's not their thing. They're going to go deep, right? They want to get to know your business partner, your business partner's business partner, your business partner's business partner's business partner. They go deep, but they tend to not go wide, okay? What type of people are yellow? Careers, nurses, teachers, civic volunteers, UN workers, preachers. They are the nurturers. So yellows need to be a chameleon. Build a relationship, right? So if you have a, a prospect who is a yellow, you have to talk about relationships. You, you can't just talk about the business. They want to know all about the relationships. They don't like sales pitches. So you cannot try to convince them to join your business. They, they don't like that at all. And most of them are going to be afraid. If you mention the word network marketing, I'm like, nope, don't want to do that. Nope, nope. I don't like to sell. I'm not a salesperson. Those are your yellows. The moment you hear someone say, oh, I'm not a salesperson, their chances are they're yellow. And um, you want to share with them how you help other people. So they're all about the save the whales, save the dolphins, right? I break for animals, <laughs> right? Those are your yellow people. If you're crying, they will cry with you, right? If you're cold, they will give you the shirt and their jacket, right? That is a yellow person. Yellows see excitement as hype. Let me go back to that. Yellows see excitement as hype. So you don't want to be overly excited when you talk to a yellow because then they're going to give you the side eye. They're not going to trust you. All right. How many of you would say that you are predominantly yellow? Louise said me. <laughs> Veronica said, oh my, I am so yellow. <laughs> Whoever's on the Galaxy Note said me. Galaxy Note, please update your name so I know who you are. Michelle said, I'm yellow. Paula said, yellow. Maya said, yep, yellow. Gina, Natalie got some yellow. Yolanda. Well, remember, 35%, so many more of you have said that you are yellow than the people who said that they were red. So the statistics are pretty right, right? Shantae said, yes. Vanessa said, me. Jai says she got some of that. Nicole said, I am yellow. All right, let's go to the next one. Blue. 15% of the population are blue. Blues are fun and creative. Always in a program, but jump from program to program, right? Or from project to project, right? They're selling candles, and then they go and they sell uh, jewelry, and then they go and they do credit repair, and then they go and they do this and they do that. So blues are always jumping around from program to program. Blues are the world's most creative people on the planet. Very creative. So people that are designers and artists, they are very blue. Blues love excitement. They're creative, and they want things to happen quickly. Massive spillover and build deep. 
travel big and fun events. So your blues, oh my gosh, you get a blue to go to convention, they will never leave your business. You get a blue to go to ITQ, they will never leave the business. You get the blue to go on a fam trip, they will never leave the business because they're all about having fun. Blues, if you have a bunch of blues, don't call it a private business reception, call it a travel party. All they're gonna hear is the word party and they're like, I am so there, I'll bring the wine. That's your blue. Blues will always be talking about fun things to do, family and vacation. So if, you, if your prospect is a blue, oh my gosh, talk about the fam trips and how much fun they can have with their family on these trips and things like that. Blues love that kind of stuff. How many of you identify and say that you are more predominantly blue? Ja, Ja says she's, now she's saying she's blue. Ja, you, you done said you claimed every color. <laughs> Jerry said, Lord, I got blue, so I'm a rainbow too. Lisa said, I'm all into blue. Denise says, I'm a blue. Kalia said, I'm definitely blue. Monica said, I'm blue, blue, blue. <laughs> Debbie Williams, I'm a little blue, part blue. Okay, Debbie J said, part blue. Hey, hey, Dee Dee. She said, I'm yellow and blue. Maritza says, I am into the blues. Okay, great. Okay, now Jaw's saying she's blue and yellow, but mostly blue. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Danya says blue, Keisha says I'm blue, Debbie says blue and yellow too. Okay, great. All right, let's get to the next one. All right, somebody's coloring on my screen. Hold on, let me clear that. All right, don't color on my screen, guys. <laughs> green, 35% of the population are green. Greens are thinkers and analytical people. They take time to make decisions and sometimes miss the boat on big opportunities. Passing over opportunities repeatedly. Green people, yep. Greens are professionals like accountants and doctors and lawyers. So with a, with a green, you gotta be up front. Don't talk too fast or try to sell them. They want solid information. You wanna discuss the compensation plan with them. You wanna allow them to review your website. Blue, greens love to attend conferences and calls and meet business building partners with other professionals. They will not make a decision until they review all of the information. So the whole point of all of this, guys, is that you need to ask enough questions to your prospects so you can identify what color they are and then you'll know exactly how to approach them does that make sense identify what color your prospect is and then you will know how to approach them so how many of you identify with the greens maria said this is me tyra said i'm green Maria, I think you claim some other color too. <laughs> Veronica says, I am analytical and I will ask 85 gazillion questions before I make a decision. Yep, then Veronica, you are very green. <laughs> Natalie said, yep. Maria said, red. Maria, are you green or are you red? <laughs> What's your dominant color? Michelle says, a little green. Danya said, I have to change my mind to green. Okay. Good, Maria said mostly green. Yolanda says, I am green with a touch of yellow. Okay, good, 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 good. But notice that yellows and greens make 35% each of the population. So that's 70% of the people that you come in contact with are gonna be either yellow or green, 70%, right? And then 15% are red and 15% are blue. So, when you do your edification, this remember, this training is about doing the edification. Your edification should include elements from all four colors. So how do we do that? Well, the red element. You want to introduce your expert by their first and last name and include the level they have achieved in the company. So here's an example. 
Orlando Moore is a five-star director, meaning he has helped over 4,000 families position themselves for financial freedom by starting a home-based travel business. He is a founding director, three-time company MVP, and he wears the diamond ring, signifying earnings of a half a million dollars annually. If your prospect is a red, they're gonna love this. They're like, wow. They're accomplished. They have this level, right? That's what reds look for. They see that and they're like, oh, that's money. He's making a lot of money. Again, you want to, you can't just say he's a five-star director and not tell them what that means. They don't know what that means. So you want to, you know, tell them that means, you know, he's helped over 4,000 families, right? Five stars have 4,000 people. Um, Diamond ring. You don't just want to say he wears a diamond ring. You got to tell them what that means that he's been given the presidential diamond ring. It signifies earnings of a half million dollars. Okay, so that is your red element. If they're a gold builder, right? This is a gold builder. Um, they've reached the top of our builders program, and they are now poised in position to um, to earn. Uh, over $118,000 in residual income, right? If they're a gold builder, right? Or they're a 2020 member. So-and-so is a bronze builder, right? Meaning they've helped three families position themselves. Um, they've reached the top of our builder. They So-and-so is a bronze builder, meaning they've reached the first level of our builders program and they've helped three people position themselves for financial freedom by starting a home-based travel business, right? You can edify anybody, okay? They've accomplished something. If they are a brand new business partner and they haven't signed their first business partner, you can still edify them, right? Mary Smith has joined this business. She is now poised in position to earn a substantial income by starting her business. You just edified her because she's made a decision to start the business, right? That's part of her edification. The yellow element, share that your expert loves to help people. Mr. Moore has a heart of gold and he loves to help people. That's it, that's your yellow, right? Remember, yellows are people who, they, they just love to help people. They, they wanna save the wells. They wanna, you know, they break for squirrels, right? So all you gotta say is, so-and-so has a heart of gold and loves to help people. And guys, if you listen to the IMV, the corporate call, the team calls, you hear some of these same elements being repeated over and over again, right? So, so-and-so has a heart of gold and loves to help people. That's your yellow element. Now your blue element. Share that your expert loves to have fun. He loves to have fun. That's it. It's simple. Guys, this is not complicated to do an edification. It is very simple. He loves to have fun. And now the green element. Share that your expert knows 100% of the facts. He knows 100% of the facts about this opportunity. So what does the final edification look like? Hi, Mary. I was able to get my senior business partner on the line. Please don't say you're upline. Please don't call them your sponsor. That is our internal language, and your prospect has no idea what that is. Say it is your senior business partner. You can also call them your coach, your success coach, but do not call them your upline or your sponsor. So, hi, Mary. I was able to get my senior business partner on the line. I would like to introduce you to Orlando Moore. Mr. Moore is a five-star director, meaning he has helped over 4,000 families position themselves for financial freedom by starting a home-based travel business. He is a founding director three-time company MVP, and he wears the diamond ring, signifying earnings of a half of a million dollars annually. Mr. Moore has a heart of gold, and he loves to help people. He loves to have fun, and he knows 100% of the facts about this opportunity. Mr. Moore, please meet Mary. And what do you do right after that? Mute your line. You don't say nothing else. We don't want to hear you sneezing, coughing, cooking, Nothing, just mute your line because at that point, your expert is going to take over the call. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how you do an edification. So questions, please unmute yourself if you have a question.
some, some, someone on a Samsung. I don't know who Samsung is. If you can rename yourself <laughs> again, guys, please let your business partners know when they get on the trainings to rename themselves. Oh, Aisha. Yes. You want to click on the three dots next to the corner of your picture. And in the drop down menu, it says rename, and then you can type your name in. <laughs> no questions. Somebody has to have a question. How many of you were struggling with the edification before tonight's training? Had no clue how to do it? Hey, Michelle. Hey, um, I'm a little late, so I didn't see. Oops, I can't hear you. You're muted. I think we lost Michelle. Hey, Tanisha, this is Tyra. Hey, Tyra. So I didn't struggle with it. I was just doing it a little backwards. I was doing the edification before I brought the expert on. Okay. So there so, are some, I'm glad you brought that up because if you watch Mr. Moore's PS3, he talks about edifying before um, you get them on the phone with the prospect. And there are times, depending on the situation, where you may ed do some edification before. For example, let's say you're with your coworker and you're talking to your coworker is complaining about the job. They're complaining about the job, and you bring up to your coworker, "Well, listen, if I could show you a way to retire in the next three to five years, is this something that you'd be willing to take a look at?" And your coworker says. Well, absolutely, yes, I would. And maybe you shared a video with them and you say, you know what, I would love to introduce you to my senior business partner, Tanisha Burke. She started her travel business and in 20 months she was able to retire. And I, would, I can introduce you to her. So in that situation, you're edifying me before. Here's why I feel it's best to edify while the senior business partner is on the line. So I always tell you guys, I want you to edify once you merge the call because I want to hear how you're doing the edification. As your coach, how can I coach, train, and develop you to do a proper edification if I never hear what you're saying? I don't know what you said, right? And number two, I'm listening for cues of what color your prospect may be. So if you say to your prospect, and I'm on the line, and you say, well, uh, after 20 months in the business, Tanisha Burke was able to retire from her corporate job and your prospect says, wow, I now know that that might be something that your prospect is thinking about, that they want to retire early too. Maybe it wasn't something that they thought about. Maybe they thought they were just going to get in this travel business and just book travel. And then once you told them that I retired from my job by doing this business, now they have a bigger dream. Right? They're like, wow, I thought I was just going to come in here and book travel, but somebody retired from their job in just 20 months, right? So if I hear that they responded to that fact about me, then I'm going to definitely touch on that when I speak to them, right? Or if you say, um, you know, Tanisha Burke has, you know, a team of over a thousand travel business owners, and they say, wow. I'm th now I'm, I'm going to go back to that because there's a good chance that this person has probably done network marketing before, didn't have a lot of success, maybe couldn't recruit anybody. So I'm going to go back to that. But if I'm not hearing what you say, I have no idea what I'm walking into. Does that make sense, Tyra? Yes, ma'am. All right. So again, some, some leaders are different, you know, and honestly, I really think it, it's, it really depends on the situation, but it's very awkward for me as, as the expert on the line, if you just merge the call and say, Mary, this is Tanisha Burke, Tanisha Burke, this is Mary. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like it, it's hard and it makes it harder for me to throw it back and edify you because once you introduce your expert to your um, prospect, the, the expert is then supposed to edify you. And it makes it hard to kind of throw it back to you if all you say is, Mary, this is Tanisha, Tanisha, this is Mary. 
right? But if you say all those, if you edify me properly, then I'm able to say, thank you, Tyra, for that wonderful introduction. Mary, I don't know if Tyra told you, but she is a goal builder in my organization, which means she's reached the top of our builders program. She is now poised and positioned to earn a substantial residual income. And I'm working very closely with Tyra to help her achieve her goals, as well as anyone who partners with her. Now, Tyra's partner um, prospect is gonna be like, wow, that means if I partner with Tyra, she's gonna help me too, right? And now I've edified Tyra, so now her, her prospect is gonna feel comfortable that you know Tyra is somebody, she's a mover and shaker in the business as well. She's doing some things. So that is why I uh, prefer that you guys edify while the expert is on the phone. We cannot help you improve your edification if we don't hear what you're saying. Does that make sense to you guys? All right, Denise says, this is helpful, very informative. Tyra says, good stuff. Tarika says, if you can click fast back through the first floor. I will at the end, just stay, um, stay on the line, Dee Dee, and I'll go back to the beginning so you can catch those. And this is recorded, so you'll be, I'll tag you in the, um, the recording. Sorry. Uh, Maria said yes. Tanya said yes. Jennifer said yes. Shantae, said yes. Said yes, yes. All right. Does anyone have any questions? So Nicole said, as a beginner, there could be some fear of doing a two-way call. So Nicole, I want you to unmute yourself and tell me exactly what what fear do you have? What specifically? Nicole? All right. Well, Gina is asking, does this apply I'm to... Sorry. Oh, there you go. Hey, Nicole. I'm sorry. Hi. Hello. It took me a while to figure out how to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So what is your fear of doing um, a three-way call? I guess that I'm just worried about the, you know, doing it correctly and um and knowing the order of events, I guess, of what I do, but it seems like it's easy enough. It's just to introduce exactly. and you've trained us very well on that. So just watching this video, I guess, a few times. And then mute myself. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> so I'm basically handing the call over. Okay. Exactly. Um, That's all you're doing is handing the call over, introducing, and muting yourself. All right. And then do you guys give feedback of if, like, if there's something wrong with the edification or whatever? I, I do. I do. Mm -hmm. um, and all the leaders should as well. Um, okay. And if, if you do a, a three-way call with your leader, Call them back and say, you know, how, how was my edification or is there anything? So don't always wait for your leader to uh, reach back out to you. You should want to know if you're doing well or if there's something you can improve upon. So reach back out to your leader and say, you know, that was a great three-way call. How was my edification? Is there something I could have done better? But those of you that have used me for three-way calls, I almost always do a debrief right where I tell them um, call me back as soon as you get a chance especially if I don't have another three-way call happening immediately and I always ask okay what did you learn during this three-way call what questions do you have because I want you guys to I want you to be able to rock your team's three-way calls and I want you to learn you're gonna learn by hearing different people do the three-way calls right I do it differently than maybe Tamikia does it right or the way you know Jackie does it. We we all have our own little flavor of how we do it, but you'll also notice some similarities because it's all about duplication, right? So you know, uh, Camette always had me do her three-way calls when she first started. Always, always, always. Cynia always had me do her three-way calls. So guess what? If you get Camette or Cynia to do your three-way call, they probably sound a little bit like me. <laughs> right why because they they heard me do their calls over and over and over again right there are people from other team other teams or you know within my organization that you know they kind of struggle and I'm like 
let me do your next 20 three-way calls. Book them on my calendar so that you can hear how I do it. Because maybe the person that was doing their three-way calls is not so strong, right? They're still learning. Because three-way calls, it, it's one of those things, the more you do it, the better you get, right? Mr. Scott did my three-way calls when I first started. I mean, he lost his voice. I booked so many three-way calls with him. It was literally like three, four a day, back to back, every single day for weeks. He lost his voice. But after hearing how he was conducting my calls, I was like, oh, I know how to do this. I got this. I can close them, right? And then I was closing them. So then I was re recruiting, um, closing my business partner's three-way calls. I was able to do it because Mr. S I learned from him, right? And then Kamet learned from me, Cynthia learned from me, and then now their teams are learning from them. So that is the duplication. You may not be really good in the beginning, but if you get people doing your three-way calls and you're taking notes, while you're on a three-way call, you will learn how to do it because your, your prospect asks the same questions. It's usually like the same five questions that they always ask. Sometimes they're not clear about, you know, they ask questions about the training, right? Well, you know the training, right? There's training online, there's the online academy, there's weekly webinars within Teletravel, right? There's training in the Planet Marketing back office. We do training at the weekly meeting. So you're able to talk to them about the training. Right? Sometimes they're not clear about how much it costs to get started. You know how much it costs to get started. You can break it down, right? It's the same questions that they ask. Um, every now and then, your prospect might be a shark. They might be that person that has done network marketing before, who maybe they've built a large organization, but they're very savvy in network marketing, and they ask different questions, right? A lot of times they ask questions about the compensation plan. Um, I had one young lady today, she wasn't in network marketing, but she asked about insurance liability. She's like, well, if someone takes a trip and you know something goes wrong, what if they try to sue me? That was a great question that the average person, guess what, she's green, she's very green, right? I, I picked that up right away. She was one of those, she's like, I need to look over everything tonight and then I'm gonna call so-and-so back tonight and let them know my decision. She would not make a decision on the call. She needed to look over everything, she needed to pray about it, she wanted more videos if there was anything else, and then she's gonna make her decision tonight. But again, very green. So again, you want to be taking notes while the three-way call is going on so that you'll know how to answer that question in the future. Does that make sense? So those of you who had me done your three-way calls, they can attest Tanisha always does a debrief. <laughs> Almost always there's a debrief with me. All right, let me go check some of these notes and see if anybody else has any questions on here. And if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself. Oh, so Gina, to answer your question, Gina says, does this apply to the new member welcome call as well? Absolutely. Please, please, please do not um, just call and say, uh, hey, Carol, this is, you know, my senior business partner, Tanisha Burke. Tanisha, this is my new business partner, Carol. Don't do that, because Carol's like, who the heck is Tanisha Burke? And why did you, why are you introducing me to her? You have to edify during the welcome call as well. We want your new business partner, Carol, to know that there are some experts in this business that can, help help her grow her business that are part of her leadership her success team that are educated and they're going to be there for her we want carol to know that she has layers of leadership and if you don't edify during a welcome call carol is wondering why the heck are you introducing me to this person what can they do for me right the other thing is um it also helps your leader to know a little bit more about your prospect. Again, we're listening for some cues to hear, well, what is it about my edification that made this person say, wow, or that's great, or really, right? We wanna know a little bit more, so it helps us to identify what color your prospect is. So absolutely, Gina, during the welcome call, you should always edify your expert, whoever you're welcoming. Same thing with webinars. Right, if you're doing a travel party or a webinar with someone, you know, there's two people tag teaming, you should be edifying each other. All right, so Daryl said, I learned something similar to this years ago, but the facts are 100% on point. Thank you, Daryl. Awesome. 
Louise said, I keep a copy of edification for those who do my three-way calls in my notes. Great idea. I do the same thing, Louise. The edification, again, the note section, guys, if you're not using a note section on your phone, you're missing out. The note section of your phone should have everything. The link to your planet marketing so you can copy and paste. The scripts so you can copy and paste. Your list of leads, maybe you have it in your notes section. Your usernames and passwords. I mean, I use the notes section for everything, but yes, I also have a section in my notes called edifications and everybody's edifications. I keep it right in here. Did you know that information on an edification is also on a three-way call list? How many of you knew that? Let's go to our Team Lux Platinum group. And under announcements. And if you look under announcements, you want to look for three-way call list. It's the very first thing that pops up. But in the three-way call list, for every single person, we bullet, bullet pointed their edification. Right? So you see here, Debbie Williams, Gold Builder. She works a full-time job. She's a wife, mom, grandma, works business part-time, loves to travel, help people, have fun, knows 100% of the facts about the opportunity, right? Miko Brown, gold builder, married mom, works the business part-time, background in res restaurant management, loves to travel, help people, have fun, knows 100%, right? So it, that part is the same. It's just the first couple are going to tell you, you know, where they are in the company. Right, so all the information is right there in the list. If you're getting someone new to do your edification, um, I'm sorry, to do your three-way call and they're not on this list, just shoot them a text and say, hey, can you send me your edification? They'll send it to you. They'll let you know exactly you know, what, their, um, what their edification is. I've had to do it um, with a few people. Why? Because People are moving up the ranks and popping pins so much. There's so many new people. I don't know where people live. And are you, are you a one star? Are you a two star? Right? I know they're a director, but I may not know enough about them to do a proper edification. And if they don't get back to me, guess what? I'm just going to say, um, this is Michael Browner Jr. He is a director in our company, mover and shaker. He loves to help people. He loves to have fun. And he knows 100% of the facts about this opportunity. I'm just going to make it real general. <laughs> He's a director. He loves to have fun, loves to help people know 100%, right? And that'll be their edification if I don't know the actual details about them. Does that make sense? Uh, let's see. Good. Daryl says, I'm a red green. He said, I'll go and figure it out along the way but I do blend it all to see who I'm communicating with. Exactly, Daryl, and that's what you wanna do. You kinda wanna get a sense for you know, who you're speaking with and you're gonna change how you speak to them based on what you learn about them. Yolanda said, yes, Tanisha provides feedback. It has helped me get better and be less nervous. Good, thank you for sharing that, Yolanda. And Louise is telling Nicole that she practices the edification before the call so she doesn't sound like she's reading it off the paper. After a while, you'll be able to edify without the paper. Very, very true, Louise. I used to do the same thing when I had to do the, um, the corporate call with Mr. Moore. Before they did the webinar, it was a conference call. And I remember doing that and I had it in front of me and I had to make it sound like I was not reading his edification. But once you do it over and over again, you get, you get good at what you continue to do repeatedly. Debbie says the debriefs help. Good, good. So make sure you're debriefing for your team when you do their three-way calls. All right. 
<laughs> Ashanta said, Lord, don't ever let my note section get deleted. I copy it on paper too, just in case, right? Back it up to the cloud, Ashanta, back it up to the cloud. <laughs> and Gina said she has edification lists on index cards. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What, what time is it? Okay, so guys, we got 20 minutes left. We went through this pretty quick. So I'm going to open it up now for Q&A. Any question you have, it doesn't have to, do, have to be about the edification. So this is a time when any of you with any questions can uh, share. Just unmute yourself if you have a question. Anybody, anybody? What, no questions? Are you telling me I was that thorough with everything? You guys, you guys are killing it, right? You dropping your MTGing in the system. <laughs> Let's talk real quick about 40 days and 40 nights, right? We are going to be going into 40 days and 40 nights. It's gonna start on April 22nd. And what 40 days and 40 nights is, it's a season of sacrifice. For 40 days, we are asking all of you to be laser focused on building your business. We want you to black out and just go to that place, whatever that place is in your mind, in your spirit, that allows you to work harder than you've ever worked before. In 40 days and 40 nights, there's something that you want to give up so that you can receive the benefit at the end. It's kind of like Lent. You guys know, for those of you that may be Catholic, right? So during Lent, you give up something, right? Some people give up drinking, right? They give up the wine or they give up sugar or something like that. Well, for 40 days and 40 nights, what are you willing to give up so that you can go to that place? where you can work harder than you've ever worked before on your business. For some of you, it may be giving up, going out, partying on Friday nights, right? For others, it may be, I'm giving up TV for 40 days and 40 nights so I can focus on my business, right? Or maybe you're gonna give up, I, I don't know, whatever that is for you, whatever that thing is that you do. Maybe you're used to coming home and you know, taking a nap and chilling for an hour right? Well, maybe now you're going to say, you know what, during these 40 days and 40 nights, I'm going to come home and just go in my office, lock the door and work my business until it's bedtime. I'm not going to do that chilling and doing this, right? What are you willing to give up, right? Maybe it's, you know what, I'm going to give up an hour of sleep in the morning. I'm going to get up an extra hour every single morning during 40 days and 40 nights so I can get that extra hour in for my business right? Maybe it's you're going to stay up an hour later at night, right? You're going to catch it on the tail end. Maybe it's, you know, at lunchtime, I'm, I'm going to work my business during lunch instead of, you know, just being on Facebook watching videos. Whatever that is, what are you willing to give up so that you can take your business to the next level? You cannot make withdrawals from your business if you don't make deposits. I'm going to repeat that. You cannot make withdrawals from your business if you're not willing to make deposits. You want your business to pay you six figures, but you only want to put 30 minutes a day. Is that realistic? Is that fair? Right? Um, Maria, 40 days and 40 nights starts on April 22nd. Maybe some of you have been afraid to do a travel party. Well, guess what? During 40 days and 40 nights, Maybe that's what you do. You say, you know what? I'm going to do a travel party every single week during 40 days and 40 nights. Maybe I'm going to do two a week. It's doing something you haven't been doing, taking it to the next level. Okay. Um, I'm definitely going to be, well, I do a travel party every week anyway. Every Tuesday, I do a travel party at my home every single week, but maybe I'll do another one on the weekends, right? Maybe I'm going to do a blitz for the team on the weekends during 40 days and 40 nights. If I'm exposing 50 people a day, maybe during 40 days and 40 nights, I'm going to increase that to 50 in the morning and 50 at night, right? Using that just as peak interest, right? If right now I'm doing 25 follow-ups a day, 
Well, guess what? During 40 days and 40 nights, I'm going to increase that to 50 follow-ups a day. It's taking it to the next level. So how many of you are planning to participate in 40 days and 40 nights? I mean, really participate. I'm not saying you're going to go in and you do it for seven days and then, you know, you go back to what you were doing. How many of you are 100% committed to doing the full 40 days and 40 nights and you're willing to make some sacrifices. You're willing to get a little bit uncomfortable during these 40 days and 40 nights so that you can take your business to the next level. So let me see who's in. Jerry said me, Daryl said me, Debbie said me, Shantae said me, Thelma said me, Louise said me, Paula said me, Natalie, Taisha, Ja, Tyra, Maya, Ashantis, Sand says she's committed. Maria says she's putting reminders in her phone every day. Good, good. She says she's doing it right now. I love that. Debbie said, I'm all in. Janine said, me. She can't wait. Martina says, I am. LG Harmony, I don't know who that is, but they said, I'm in. Gina said, me. Michelle said, yes. Angel, yes. Yolanda, yes. Tawika, I'm sure I'm pronouncing your name wrong, and I'm so sorry. Tawika? Okay, she said me, Denise. Didi said me, Jody said I'm all in, Jennifer said me, Tanya said me. Okay, so I wanna know, what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you gonna do differently during the 40 days and 40 nights that you're not doing now? And I want you guys to also find an accountability partner, someone that's gonna push you. So Maria said less TV. Okay, that's good. Jennifer said she's giving up sleep. Okay, good. So she's either, you know, getting up a little bit earlier or going to uh, bed a little later. Jerry said she's giving up sleep and less TV. Janine says she's waking up earlier. Good. Louise said I'm going to get up earlier than I normally do. Okay, good. LG Harmony says, I'm going to sacrifice my beauty rest. <laughs> Maya says, wake up an uh, hour earlier and working through her lunch break. Awesome. Oh, hi, Violet. <laughs> ah, Dee Dee says she's waking up during the U.S. time. So she is in Bahrain. So she's in a totally different time zone in a different country. And she also says she's going to go live. That was something that she was not doing, um, but she's stepping out of her comfort zone and she says she's gonna go live more during 40 days and 40 nights. Great job, Didi. Ah, Taisha, I love that. She says, I'm giving up excuses. Thank you for admitting that you give a lot of excuses. And during these 40 days and 40 nights, you're not giving any excuses. I love that, love that. Thelma said, more of everything business. Tax season is officially over. Yes, Thelma. Tanya said, I guess I have to give up sleep and work because I've been all in. <laughs> I love that, Tanya. Tanya, there's always another level. There's always another level. And I know that you'll find that next level for you to kick it up another gear. Terry says she's given up uh, lunch breaks. Okay, Shantae says she's waking up earlier. Ashanta said waking up earlier and going to bed later. Right, during that time, if you're get squeezing in an extra hour here, an extra 15 minutes, use the Just Ask Peak Interest script because it's all about mass, all out massive exposure. It's about exposing more people during the 40 days and 40 nights than you've exposed, you know, in these past weeks or past months. It's taking it to the next level. Maybe it's doing some more follow-ups as well. It's income producing activities. All right, Angel said, wake up earlier. Twana says, go doing lives and giving up meat. Okay, that's good. Cause you know what happens, it's, it's, it's like, um, you know, fasting. You giving up meat is saying that I'm going to focus. It's gonna help you focus and put yourself just in that place mentally, giving up something. 
Paula said, more connects daily and going live. Good. Debbie says, having travel parties and be more consistent. Good, good, good. Jazz said, work lunch breaks, continue to work and practice before bed and staying focused. Excellent. Debbie says she hasn't pinpointed exactly the first thing, but we'll have it by Thursday. Good. Denise says, I'm in. As soon as we get back from Disney, we will be gone through the 30th of April. I will wake up earlier and put all put my all into my business. Good, good, good. Natalie says she's going to take her break at work and work it during lunch and breaks. Do more when she gets home first. Excellent. Yolanda said, less non-business related social media. That's a good one, Yolanda. You know, sometimes we get on Facebook and we just scrolling through the timeline, the news feed, and it's just a bunch of nonsense. It's not income producing. If you're on Facebook, you should be using Messenger to peak interest or you should be doing posts to generate, um, to, to market your business. But it should be prospecting and marketing. Uh, Tyra says she wants to take her business off social media and person to person. That's a great thing, right? There should be a balance. It shouldn't just be social media. So get out there and, and go to some local events. If you've only been building your business on social media and not going out and talking to people, um, you know, there's so many events in your local area. And Facebook makes it really easy to find events that are happening in and around your city. So, you know, go out to some of those events during 40 days and 40 nights. Expand your network, right? Your network is your net worth. So meeting new people face to face. That's great, Tyra. Kemet said, Corp team will also have more exposures to help. Yes, thank you, Kemet. So um, corporate is putting together some lunch break Zooms as well as midnight, midnight Madness is going to take place during 40 days and 40 nights. So there's going to be more opportunities to invite your, your guests to hear about the business. The, the lunch break ones are great because they're in and out. Usually it's, you know, like 15 to 30 minutes and it's in and out. All right. Good night, Mom. Good night, baby. Um, Daryl says, I'm getting up earlier, self-improving, developing myself, and do more business development and working with mentors. Excellent. Excellent, Daryl. Uh, Gina said, keeping the same consistency and adding to it. Awesome. Taking it up another level, Gina. I love it. Martina says, giving up music. Only get on social media to post and not scroll. I promise social media is a big distraction. Okay. All right. One of the things that you guys can do to help with the social media is change. Um, <laughs> thanks, Taisha. Um, change your what shows up first in your news feed using that option. Um, see first on certain things. I know I'm going to struggle with this on here because I'm so used to doing it on my phone and I already have a lot of my groups set up, but I want to try to show you guys what I'm talking about. I don't get distracted when I'm on social media because the only, the first things that show up are always business related stuff. So when I'm on social media, so let me see. Uh, I know I'm, I'm probably going to struggle trying to find this now. But there's an option when you join like a group where you can say, see first. Uh, let me see if I can find one. I know I'm not going to be able to find it now, but do you guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I know I have it for the Planet Marketing Directors page. Let me see if I can pull it up. I don't know where to find it now. 
but there's an option. I don't know. Google C first um, on Facebook, and it'll show you how to do it. Hey, Tanisha, is it around? This is Jay. Is it around the um, following, like, you know, where you go to yeah. follow them? Yes, 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 yes. So let me see if I can find. Um, so like Carnival, let me see. Yes. So right here, if you're on a certain group and when you click on follow, there it is. Thank you, Jay. You see it says see first. So if you do that, that means every single time you go to your Facebook news feed, everything that you've um, checked for C first is what's going to show up in your news feed. So anytime I go on my Facebook and, th and there's a limit, I don't know what the limit is. It might be like you can only have, you know, 15 or 20 pages or groups that you see first before you see any other personal stuff. So if you notice, when I just went to my news feed, there's Celebrity Cruises, there's Ray Higdon, Celebrity, the Venetian Resort, Las Vegas, Fun Jet, Celebrity posts a lot, clearly, Royal Caribbean, Royal Caribbean, why do I have all of these African Travel Inc? Why do I have all of these showing first? Because a lot of times I take from their pages and I use it as a post in my travel group because I don't have a lot of time. So I go here, I get on Facebook, I'm like, ooh, African Travel, that's a good one. I save this picture, I copy this, I post it in my Facebook travel group and I'm moving on, right? Eric Thomas, motivational. So I don't see the nonsense, travel and leisure. This is a great one to see first. Great stuff, great, great stuff. I use their stuff a lot. So a lot of times when I get on Facebook, I don't see anything that you guys are posting unless I go out of my way to intentionally see it to see what you're doing because it's all business stuff that I'm gonna see first. Then other stuff. See, now it's just now personal stuff. But usually I don't get caught up in all of this because I'm doing the business stuff and that's it. All right, so that'll help you. All right, we got three minutes. Any other questions? Michelle says she's going to go back to doing three-way calls during her lunch breaks. Yes, Michelle, and never stop doing that. <laughs> my first two years, that's what I did. There were three-way calls during my lunch break, and I would eat during, you know, just sitting at my desk. Any other questions? Two minutes. All right. I think we had a max total of like 61 of you on the line. There's 54 now. Was this training helpful? Did you find value in tonight's training? How many of you are ready to slay your next edification? <laughs> Jerry said yes. Denise said yes. Daryl said yes. Janine said yes. A lot of value, most definitely. Thank you, Shantae. Aisha said, yes, very valuable. Ashanta said, slay, yes. Debbie said, yes. Angel said, very helpful. Jai said, very much so. Michelle said, it was amazing. I missed it. Oh, I'm going to go back, Michelle. Let me pull that up. I'm going to go back through the slides really quick. Um, but again, Michelle, this is going to be posted in the Team Lux group. As soon as I get off and it downloads, you'll be able to see it. Martina said yes. Debbie said extremely helpful. If you guys have any, um, oops, excuse me. If you have any suggestions on what you want next week's training to be, let me know. Does anyone have a topic that they want for next week's training? <laughs> Yolanda said, the green in me appreciates the information. <laughs> you are welcome, Yolanda.
Any ideas for topics for next week's training? So we have, let me write this down, insurance, tips for newbies. What do you mean by tips for newbies? I need, to, I need you to be more specific about that. Let's see, insurance. Jody said, how to host a travel party. So Jody, are you do you mean an IntelliTravel travel party or Planet Marketing travel party? Terry said setting up bookings for customers who view your social media page. Setting up bookings. Terry, what do you mean? Terry, unmute yourself. Tell me a little bit more about what you mean by that. I'm saying like, um, like trips, like say if you, if I set up a, a trip for Florida or to California or something like that, how would I set that up? Like as far as expenses, like I already, they, they just can say, I want to go there. Mm -hmm. Um, like more of a, like a walkthrough. As far as like, where would I go as far as make sure I get the, the cheapest price for my customer? So that's going to be, actually I did a training on, so here's what you wanna do. You wanna go to the unit section cause I did a training on how to do your first booking and what you should do and all of that. Um, units, so let's go to the Team Lux Platinum page. Guys, units has everything. Go to units. And there's two training units. One of them is called unit number two, training videos and tips. This is more for your planet marketing business. But unit number three says travel tips and information. So someone had um, said something about travel insurance. Go to the travel insurance unit and you can learn about that there. Um, how to host an IntelliTravel travel party. Somebody mentioned travel party, so guess what? There's, a, there's already a training for that, so I don't need to do that one. Um, but the one, da, 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 tools and resources to help you increase your travel commissions. Marketing your IntelliTravel business and how to start booking. So Terry, I would start with this. This is where you should go for that type of training. Um, and there's some other things in here, but a lot of the things that you guys are saying should be tips um, or should be topics for our next training, guess what? They're already here. <laughs> I've done them already, right? Or another leader has posted it already. There's 38 things in the planet marketing one, right? And we have 17 here for, you know, travel tips and information. So go to the unit section. Um, let's see. Does that help you, Terry? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, great, great. Lisa said do both. So Lisa, the IntelliTravel one is already done. Um, I mean, we could talk about a planet marketing travel party. I know I've talked about that in probably a Q&A that we've done, but we can go into that. LG Harmony, marketing skills and booking skills. Again, that stuff is already in the units. Okay, so Jody was looking for the IntelliTravel one. Yep, so Jody, just go back to that one. Um, there's a great, great video that Jessica Sinemer did that's in that um, section. All right, so that completes the time. It's 9.04. Thank you all for showing up for your success. As soon as this uploads, I will post it in the Team Lux Platinum group under the training unit. So see you next week. Bye.